Hey everybody, welcome to Speed Bump. It's Musha. It's fire. The metallic something or other. Metallic uniframe super hybrid armor. There you go. We have seven players for Musha on the Genesis. Shmup, score attack. 30 minutes on the board. Ready to go. Defensive overdrive. All right, well, I'm going to give them the start uh, to kick us off. And we're giving them 30 minutes on the clock? Sure. Sounds good. I'm not a huge shmup fan, usually. Um, I, I, you know, pulling back the behind the scenes, I picked this game tonight. Um, because I was looking for something that would make for a good score attack, but this actually has uh, infinite continue, so we're going to go off of progress on this one. Uh, just because otherwise... Um, otherwise, I think we're going to have problems with the fact that there's infinite continues, but it probably is just going to clear out their score on game over, so... Um, probably won't make a huge difference. There's probably going to come a point in the game where even infinite continues aren't going to save you. This game's got the... The normal Gradius problem, you you die and uh, now you don't have any of the power-ups you need to just barely survive in the levels that you're at, so um, we'll see how far our players get. You said you're familiar with this game. You uh, have you beaten this? Probably. Um, shmups kind of blend together for me, but uh, I like this one. I don't remember why I like it. I just remember I like it. <laughs> That's I think it. it's got great style. You know, it's you're flying around a giant robot mech rather than a spaceship, and all the all the enemies and and set pieces are really stylized and. It does have style and good music. There's a lot of shmups on the 90s consoles. I don't even want to say Genesis, the 90s consoles. The Genesis probably has the most though. It's got zero wing. <laughs> Do you know how the power-ups work in this game? Is it like one of those branching systems? I'm gonna pull up the manual. Why am I asking you? Yeah, that's a good point. I can read a manual just as well. Uh, it probably is. If you grab the same color, you get more of that, I think, but I'm not sure. The way a lot of them work, yeah. It's kind of a strange one for power-ups, but it's a standard. You can Extra see some of, the, some of the players have opted for lasers over sideways shots. When you pick up one of these items, you can use a special weapon. If you catch the same weapon item as the one you're using, that weapon will power up. If you catch a different one, you use switch to the other one, but stay at the same weapon level. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I feel like I don't play a lot of shmup, so... Uh, but I feel like my memory tells me that in a lot of these shmups where there's like different power-up types that switching them sets you back to entry level. That's the case for the early ones. They do this. When they do this system, these modern ones, if you want to call them modern, they're, you know, 30 years old, but uh, they tend to let you keep your level at least. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, each weapon has four levels. There's the Blazing Beam, which is a strong forward attack, becomes a wide double beam at level four. There's the Vanishing Buster, which is a bomb-type weapon, so it shoots bombs, becomes multi-directional on power-up, and shoots a black hole bomb on level four. There's the Defensive Detonator, which is a barrier item, 
places a powerful barrier around you, protects from enemy fire, and becomes a blasting barrier on level 4. So I guess it starts to get an attack of its own at a certain point. Um, and the game said... Oh, okay, that's separate from the... I'm sorry, that's separate from the special sub-weapons. I was, I was thinking it was listing off... And yeah, maybe it is. This is being unclear to me. Looks like there's uh, seven levels, or seven rounds. The goal of your Mushu run on a casual playthrough should be to check out every gun all the way up. Which they didn't make too hard for you as long as you can survive. The boss is showing up on a couple screens. I love how all of the set pieces and the big ships all kind of look like uh, like large Japanese pagodas or something. Did Merlin not have a continue? Maybe they just restarted since they didn't have a level 1 beat. Everyone Maybe. else is going to clear the boss, it's looking like. Uh, how do you... What did you read about the forms? They have something for form, and it's probably the options and the way they work. Yeah, so there's formations, um, there's the forward formation, there's the three-way formation. So forward formation is that your options are on either side of you and everyone fires forward. There's the three-way formation, which is that your options are on either side of you and they shoot sort of outward, so you get three different directions. There's a back formation, which shoots, uh, your options sit behind you and they shoot backwards diagonally. Uh, there's a reverse uh, formation, which means that your options sort of trail behind you and fire whatever the opposite direction from where you are facing. So if you move to the left, they move to your right and fire to the right. Um, there's a roll, which means they'll constantly circle you and fire outward. That doesn't seem like that'd be all that useful, but you know, don't, don't listen to me. And then there's a free formation, uh, which is where your options will try to track enemies as best as they can. Which, if that's any good, that seems like that's the more powerful one. But I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a shmup guy, so maybe I'm not just not seeing <laughs> the, the real value of the forward formations. But if I were, if I read this menu right here, I would probably try free first. That would be the one I would go with. Well, you can see a couple of the players using it right now. I guess the downside of free is that it could be just targeting non-threats and, and having a little more control over which direction it shoots, whether it's forward or three-way, uh, allows you to decide what you want to target. The upset robot face boss. Not happy, they are not happy. Oh, ran into the wall, lost their arm level. standard thing in these shmups that is just kind of taken for granted is uh, I think there's two things. One of them is that your one ship is destroying an entire armada by itself and how terrifying that must be for the enemy fleet. And the second thing is that you're vampirizing energy from them to get your power-ups like some kind of monster <laughs> sentient ship. And that's those are very common concepts. Because you did not come here with your arm fully upgraded, you stole all that power. And you go back to zero when you die. Which can be pretty yeah. rough. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that being able to... Um, like, if, if they're in the right position, they might be able to get the power-ups they need. 
quickly enough, but I mean, again, I'm not a shmup guy. I've played a few here and there, and I remember playing, I think it was Gradius 3, and like, if you die at the wrong spot in the wrong stage, uh, you're, you're done. Um, you might as well just hit reset right then, because there's, you're never going to get enough power-ups to be able to, you know, get your, your double or your option back or something. It can be done, but if you play the SNES version with no slowdown, there are points where you could soft lock in Gradius for dying in any particular area. Yeah, I mean, I played the SNES version, but also take into account that I'm, like, criminally bad at shmups, so... It's, I'm certainly not the yardstick to measure by. It's pretty rough if you die in the end game in Gradius. You've got to be able to dodge everything. Uh, one of the skills you have to know how to do is just lead the target shots. I feel like I feel like untreated ADHD has given me certain gaming superpowers. But if you put thirty things on a screen and ask me to make well-informed decisions about all 30 of those things at once, I'm just going to crumble under pressure. I played a indie shmup called Astrolancer recently that made uh, a tutorial that covered the basics of shmups inside the tutorial, including when something is shooting a non-stop wall of bullets, how you can make them miss and give yourself a little window to get through. That's nice. I feel like I feel like that would be beneficial for a lot of shmups to kind of explain to you how they expected you to deal with certain threats because... Yeah, there's definitely a method to it. A lot of these shmups just shoot where you are so you can slowly roll left to right and then speed up suddenly do a circle and go around the bullets that's a common thing works in almost all of them the maneuver it's just a good maneuver I just love how this game looks like this is such a, a polished game Radius 3, have you ever played the arcade version? Have you ever seen? No, I don't even know the differences. I, I mean, I, I've, I'm i aware of... Uh, I, I've played the SNES version, and I think there's another console version. Is there a Genesis version? Well, arcade Gradius 3 is similar to the SNES one. Sort of. Same idea. All out of the same stages. It's got a difficulty thing in it that is very frustrating. <laughs> it becomes... It's obscenely hard if you haven't died enough for the game's satisfaction. It starts ramping up in an impossible oh, I way. I remember hearing something about that. It will start stealing your options. It will start spamming enemies on the screen. It'll start doing all kinds of mean things until you finally satisfied its bloodlusts. You're not allowed to win. <laughs> Look at this marching man. Maybe someday we'll give him Ikaruga. That's a cool one. I'm I'm vaguely aware of that one. Is that the one where there's like a, an alternating color system? Yeah, that's right. You're okay. immune to half of the field at once. Right. 
watching somebody who's good at it, it's unfortunately a very memorized kind of game. Even for a shmup, it's very heavily memorized. You get a lot of combo hits, but it's very interesting to watch somebody who has done that work it out. Nice. They get on screen, they get blown up the way Star Fox would blow them up, where they get a big combo shot, kill off five of them at once. <laughs> Star Fox has a cool thing where you um, you add a bill to the end of the... <laughs> it's got a happy ending, yeah, sort of. Uh, you give uh, the general a bill for every kill you got, but Star Fox decides the trick shots count as a kill, and he just amps up his bill <laughs> by a thousand kills. <laughs> oh yeah, we killed four guys at once. Uh, that's, that counts as eight. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Maybe there was someone else in there. Co-pilots. Collateral damage. The walking fella is now Terragon's enemy. He's such a goofy looking guy. I just love the way that after this fight ends, the floor falls out. And and it moves on to this this uh, river stage, the river canyon that everyone else is on. Looks like Digi Digi went back as well. I wonder. I, I I don't know enough to know whether or not they went back because they didn't realize they had infinite continues, or maybe accidentally didn't continue, or whether or not they sort of recognized that they were at a spot where they needed better equipment. The walking man is defeated again. It's on Patty Bees now. <laughs> He's just moving around from person to person. That's such a cool effect, the floor falling out, and now you're over the canyon. But you gotta play Zero Wing for that 2000 and nothing all your base beam right. excitement. But it's a really lousy awesome. <laughs> Is it not actually a good game? It's it's uh ancient. I, I feel like it would be like an NES tier level of quality. And I, I think that there's some good scrumps on NES as well. Better than that. There's a Sega CD shmup or two that are very interesting. One of them, you play as a bird flying through the garden. I cannot tell you what the name of that game is, though. Zero Wing is mediocre. Everyone in chat wants us to know how mediocre Zero Wing is. Colibri is the Sega 32X game where you play as a kind of photorealistic, not really, it's pixel art, but it looks very nice. Bird. <laughs> I think it looks really good, but what a crazy game it is. What a ridiculous shmup. Colibri, I think, is the name of like a handgun, but it's also the name of this hummingbird, so watch out. Oh, Colibri, I, I know that game. That I, I saw McCall playing that, I think. wrote it down on my backlog at some point. <laughs> I would just have to scroll back through it to find it. Now I'm looking at what the Colibri is. <laughs> like, the text. I'm right, it is a handgun, but it also happens to be the smallest handgun. It is, like, watch-sized. <laughs> and when I type that in, I see, see people loading this freaking gun. <laughs> With their little tools. Their eyeglass kit. 
Okay, so based on these kind of difficult to discern screenshots in the manual, uh, it looks like Okami and Bloodfire are on round four of seven. So they're definitely our leaders at the moment. Uh, with Merlin Cross uh, moving into stage, or they're in stage two. Um, Digi Digi is on two. Jasper Teen is now, I think, on stage four. Patty Bees is on stage three as well, and Terragon's on three. I've got an idea of who's in what order, but the screenshots don't make it clear uh, what, where the cutoffs are between the levels. Return of Walking Man. Look how cool this this stage is on Bloodfire Tiger on the screen. The guys flying around, the silhouettes in the in the lightning flashes. So Okami just had a game over, and uh, they picked up from where they left off. I'm interested in seeing whether or not Okami's able to kind of reestablish his position in this. You know, I, I think that's the real challenge, is whether or not you can pick up from that continue. Otherwise, the continues are meaningless. Jaspertine is underleveled because of a similar situation. It looks like it, he's level zero. Bloodfire Tagrung, I would say, is actually probably in the best position at the moment, because he's actually got a few levels on his weapon. Recovery can be really hard, but it can always be done. Hardly ever do I see a soft lock, like a real soft lock. It just feels like one, because the skill ceiling can be pretty rough when you don't have any of the guns they expect. Right. They don't... Usually, it's a common trap for these games that take your powers away. They don't usually checkpoint well in the form of giving you anything. They give you, like, maybe one, usually. <laughs> That's all you get. You get to pick one, level one thing, and they... You could be in there with four options and, you know, force field and all this other crap. Gradius 3 is definitely the go-to. Gradius in general is the go-to example of that syndrome. I like the, um, I mean, I get the appeal of the big, here's your guns that sh shoot the entire screen. You have four helpers, you're on fire and it blocks bullets. <laughs> it's all fun to blast for a while, but I do like the shmups that have a lower ceiling for your damage because then you don't have as far to climb. Right. And it ends up being a little bit more skillful because the difference between full power and not is not free ride. And you can't get in such a position where you can't possibly win either, because uh, having nothing isn't that far away. I think Bloodfire just cleared level f uh, 4. I think this will be moving on to level 5, if the manual is to be believed. The indie scene for shmups is extremely well done. They, uh, they take the good stuff from these old games. And they don't have those kind of problems. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's an old enough scene that I think the sort of indie developer who's interested in playing or in making a shmup, you know, is probably a, a big fan and understands what makes one good versus another. 
I would recommend the, the two indie games I, I can think of that I played in the last month are Mini Shoot Adventures, which is a rogue Zelda shmup game, and Astrolancer, which is a lot like the uh, Guardian Legend game on the NES. I'm familiar with that game. It's a very good of that style remake of that. And I don't think it's very expensive. A couple bucks. Well, we got about five minutes left. Uh, Bloodfire is definitely in first place. No questions about that. I'm interested in seeing if Okami or Jaspertine are able to clear level four with the remaining time. Look at this robot. Bloodfire. Destroy it, please. <laughs> Thank you. It cries blood when it blows up. Fantastic. It has displeased me. demonic faces. Well, that's why we have games like, <laughs> like, uh, Fantasy, what, Fantasy Land? You know, sometimes you just want to be a cute ship shooting at other cute things. It's okay. If you get the Mac Vest or, um, if you have the Switch, you could pick up a thing Fantasy called Vest. Switch and Shoot. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah. One button game. It's a little arcadey thing. When you press the shoot button, your ship changes direction from left to right. Hmm. And your goal is to and it's not just like blow up. Off. It's like always firing or something. It's always moving, and it shoots when you shoot. But you control your direction by firing. It's almost a rhythm game. Might be the last boss we get to see on screen now. Well, Bloodfire Tigering definitely has the most progress um not sure i'm not sure okami has enough time to overtake bloodfires for this run here uh but definitely bloodfire and okami at the top here jasper team easy third digi digi and patty bees have both reached level four now yeah going into the difference again between a bullet hell and a shmup and killing these enemies bloodfire is dealing with where they can shoot saves you an incredible amount of hassle and it's, it's so much easier if you can just destroy them. In a bullet hell you would probably not be able to and you would just dodge. Uh, but their bullets would be a lot more manageable, sort of, even though there's yeah. more of them. Yeah, they give you patterns that that are navigable. Yeah, so a, a shmup tends to have the checkpoint problem where you don't have the power to do that and then you get in a, you get in a place where there's so many bullets on screen they're unmanageable. The other genre would not necessarily do that to you as much, even though I think it's a harder genre usually. Last two minutes. Some of those games have this um, this grazing mechanic where you get near bullets to get powered up and <laughs> you don't touch them. And you really have to understand the tiny hitbox of your character. A lot of interesting stuff. Musha's not bringing a whole lot of 
uh, mechanics to the table that I don't see elsewhere, but it has a ton of style and music. That's why I like it. It plays pretty well. That's Okami taking the lead before the end here. <laughs> this this, this does not look like familiar stuff to what I saw on Bloodfire screen. Yeah, this boss just refuses to quit. But I think that's us. So I'm gonna let them know. Looks like uh, Okami first, Bloodfire two. Jasper team three. Pat, uh, Digi Digi and Patty are four and five. And then Merlin Cross and Tarragon. Nice work, everybody. That was cool. I haven't seen this game in a little while. It's very cool. Yeah, I'm 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 digging it. They show up on the gong show I do and then People make me play it for an hour. <laughs> it's, just, it's a good shmup. It just doesn't go away. People want to see it all the way through. Yeah, it rules. Hey, thanks for joining me off the blues. Absolutely. Take care. It's a cool race. Nice pick. Yeah. <laughs> 